Welcome back this week to a flu-ridden edition of Pro Wrestling Review. I'm Renny Detour from the Tribune Review. I'm Brian Krasner from the Daily News. I'd like to point out that I don't have the flu, and I'm Tom Combetti, but probably uh, soon to get it. So Jim's not with us this week. He's still being consoled from the uh, Steelers' <laughs> loss to the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, it's ironic you just mentioned I was just handed something. In the 10 seconds that we just did this intro, the New England Patriots just ran a punt back for a touchdown. Again. So, yeah. Oh, well. I thought you were going to tell me the Super Bowl has been called because the Patriots don't want to play. Apparently Troy Edwards fell asleep on the line of scrimmage, but you know. Well, Again? Yeah. Well, we're not Chris Berman or Tom Jackson, so we're going to move away from the football talk for a little bit. But, uh, well, what are we going to talk about tonight? Probably Raw, I think. Yeah, probably Raw. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good place good to start. Uh, pl uh, some more NWO stuff. I think the plans are starting to come together a little bit more as far as that group goes. But we don't want to give too much away because you know that's not our job to give you news and information <laughs> and things of that sort. So we'll kind of uh, dumb it down a little bit. But let's not also forget we have a slew and a stack of mail, viewer mail to get to, which we didn't get to last week, and we apologize. So hopefully, maybe one or two segments on that. That is kind of thick. So Absolutely. one of those may be a close up of this. one of those may be a subpoena. I'm not really sure. So yeah, let's this, let's be careful. This doesn't look like a lawsuit. This is all the email. Isn't that the Jim's WWF contract? I think they, they mailed it to us by mistake. They probably did, yes. So they're going to bring him in a few with gold dust, but that's another topic for another day. But uh, I guess uh, we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that happened on Raw, an actual good edition of Raw, so please stay tuned. Aaron reviewed the show on his portion of the website and had a lot of good things to say about it. I agree wholeheartedly with a lot of the things you said. I mean, r where do we start? I mean, it was just a good show from top to bottom. Well, I, I guess maybe we should start off with the big news. I mean, the, it, everything is revolving around the NWO once again. It feels like 1996 again. Uh, but there was just a drop-dead great segment between Ric Flair and Vince McMahon uh, that was, I mean, it was like vintage stuff. It was, it was incredible. Uh, Flair came out and showed a video piece. It was about three minutes long or so, set to a Kid Rock song that highlighted literally every major highlight in WWF history. I mean, it was all the stuff that everybody always said the WWF didn't have the balls to show, like Bret Hart fingering the WCW <laughs> symbol. Yeah, there you go. It's 10 o'clock, kids. Um, Owen You're not Hart. gonna take your shirt off next, are you? <laughs> No. Uh, hell. Uh, but, you know, just all the big stuff like that, uh, showing Owen Hart. Um, well, I just, I mean, and you brought up this point about how, you know, in the past, the WWF would never so much as even mention WCW. I mean, yeah. hell, they would bring guys in from WCW and not even call them anything remotely <laughs> what they were called. Like Lex Luger. Well, don't call him Lex Luger. He's the narcissist. You know, we can yeah. tell that it's Luger. It like so they've come a long way since those days. Well, they sort of have. I don't know. I, I know none of you guys watch Jacked, and I, I don't know why I did. I was by a television. But uh, they were talking about the NWO angle on there, and they said, we don't know what this is. What could this, what could this be? It's like, man, it's 1984 all over again. But, yeah, they have come a long way. And the video piece was just, it, it was incredible. Probably the highlight of the whole video was just one line by Flair, which I'd like to point out that Jerry Lawler tried his damnedest to ruin, was the fact that when Flair was talking to McMahon about don't bring the NWO and don't ruin the company you created, he said, in four minutes you showed these people why they're here. You have showed them why they're wrestling fans. And Lawler, much to his great fart and TNA jokes he has every week on the show, it w in four minutes it was five. Why does he try to ruin, why does he intentionally try to piss on something that's good? Unless he's holding <coughs> a super soaker ready to squirt somebody, you know, I'm going to prematurely ejaculate, whatever the hell he says. I'm not doing that for cheap heat. That's actually Lawler talking. I don't understand why he does that. I mean, he didn't ruin it by any means. But the yeah. thing is, why not just stay silent throughout the whole segment? That's let definitely Flair, let McMahon talk. That's definitely a segment where I could have seen Paul Heyman oh, instead of Jerry selling Lawler. Him. Yeah. And, and Heyman, you know, obviously respecting the fact that they're showing the WWF's lineage from back in, you know, 1984 and on. And it's one of those things where Heyman probably might not say a lot. He might just stay quiet like Jim Ross did. <laughs> did an excellent job of not saying anything. I know that sounds weird to say. But, uh, yeah, I totally agree. I think Lawler, his, his you know, childish remarks towards Ric Flair, not needed here. This is supposed to be a serious segment, a segment actually that, you know, as great as Ric Flair is, and I know we praise him every week, you really get a sense of how good he is. That interview was one of the best interviews he's ever given. Yeah. And I can point to one specific about the interview was when he was talking about Vince McMahon and, you know, don't ruin what you've done. You know, this is your company. He goes, you're not Vince McMahon, you know, he wasn't Vince McMahon, the heel character, the Mr. McMahon character. He was Vince McMahon, the people that cheered him last night because of what Ric Flair was right. saying, because of the passion he was showing. And that says a lot about Ric Flair. It says a lot about this whole entire angle and the segment itself. And you know, another thing to it, it's like one of those, you know, just sick and tired of being right. 
is that for for how long now have we been saying that uh, they need to go back and show old footage? I mean, the the, the history it will give you more of a perspective. And I, there was a comment I think on my page uh, about what do you think about Hulk Hogan coming in? And the person who wrote this said that. Um, it seems like it's the it's 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 just the alliance thing all over again, and it it just seems like a repeat. And I can see where he's coming from. I, well, I, yeah. To a degree, I think that's true. But the thing that's different is it's almost like the alliance thing was a test run. Like, okay, we screwed it up. Let's look back and see what we did wrong. And one of the things they did wrong is they didn't use any of the history. Right. They didn't exactly. draw upon why it was so important that the alliance and the WWF were feuding with one another and and what that meant. But they've started off on the right foot on this one. You could say it sounds like a repeat of the Alliance, and, and to a degree, like I said, that's true. But just showing that video clip last night and Ric Flair saying, this is your history, this is what you created, you know, you've had since the 1960s this, this great empire started by your father that you took to new heights. Why would you want to bring in three of the most destructive forces ever that killed one company before it that I went through, that I personally watched, you know, when I was the nature boy Ric Flair in WCW, I watched it kill my company. Why would you want to do the same thing to your company? That, that was great stuff. In that segment last night, it was already 10,000 times better than anything they did in the Alliance story. Oh, totally in agreement. One of the things, though, that separates us from the Alliance, obviously when the Alliance debuted, you could have had a video package or whatever just showing the history of WCW, of the NWA. But the thing with the Alliance, you had how many guys, and according to Vince McMahon and whoever the hell else, power that be, and I hate to use that. No one knew who Lance Storm was. No one knew who Booker T was. Right now with the NWO, you have three, possibly four, of guys that are already, dare I say, over, guys that the fans can recognize. And with the interview this past Monday, the guys that are actually a threat. With the Alliance, yeah, like you said, Brian, I never actually thought of this. This could be just a test run with the Alliance. And now they learn from their mistakes, hopefully, and now this NWO thing is going to be treated with the validity and the seriousness it deserves. It actually feels there I say that if they do come in, they may ruin the company, and they just may. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about that because there's a lot of other things on Raw that obviously affected the NWO coming in. So we're going to come back. We're going to talk a lot more about Monday Night Raw. So please come back. About the uh, what were we talking about? Raw. We yeah, should do an '80s show on here. Just highlight like the. Pay I don't mean to jump into this. <laughs> well, the reason I, I said that actually play with the marker. It yeah, came from an off give me, give me the marker. There you go. Draw pictures. It came from an off-camera conversation, but it also came from the three guys coming back were stars in the 80s. Well, I guess Kevin Nash didn't really come into the until early 90s. But he was born in the 80s. Yeah. Scott Hall made his mark in the 80s, and Hulk Hogan actually, I think, may have the, a patent on the 80s. I'm not really sure about that to check. Mm -hmm. But uh, with those three guys coming in. Now, there was some word on the internet before Raw had aired. There was all this uh, talk that this controversial video was going to air, which ended up being the the video we spoke of earlier. This Controversial? Show. Well, apparently there's a second video that's going to be made after, and, and we're, again, we're taping this before SmackDown. We don't know what happened yet on SmackDown. Apparently this is going to happen after Ric Flair turns v v uh, McMahon's offers down or whatever. But there's a clip <coughs> where, if you remember those old, the following announcements of paper by the NWO, instead of saying that, it's been paid for by Vince McMahon, and they show him talking about killing the company, and, and you can see Hogan Hall Nash in shadows in the background. I guess they taped it a couple weeks ago. Uh, in Stanford, Connecticut, so look for a second video to air. Maybe that means Hogan talking. Hall and Nash would have had to been in Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah, they were. When you, you can't say that on TV, uh, though. When you said controversial, I thought you meant maybe showing Bruno on WWF television in this day and age. I thought maybe that well, was the show. controversy. I realized yeah. that. And when the, I, well, I, mean, I dare to dream, don't I? Yeah, well. Well, um, to touch on a point that you left us with before we went out to break, you talked about how it seems like now the NWO is being considered a legitimate threat. And one of the things that I took from <coughs> Raw last week was the fact that you look at the Acolytes, probably your toughest team yeah. with a reputation of being guys that, you know, if someone's screwing up, i.e. public enemy, <laughs> let's throw them in there and get killed. <laughs> so, but but I, I really like what Brad Sean Farouk did about coming to Ric Flair saying, you know what these guys are like. If these are the guys we're thinking of, don't do this. You know, please implore Vince McMahon to stop this. Yeah. And this is coming from a team with a lot of credibility as being tough guys, the Acolytes. Right. And I thought it went a long way for them to actually address this saying, and, and to me, if, if, if you look at Bradshaw, he actually looked a little nervous about it. Yeah. And that's a good thing. So, yeah. I mean, any time you can have a tag team like the Acolytes, as well respected as they are for what they do, maybe more from behind the scenes than what they do in the ring, to, to you know, actually consider the NWO a legitimate threat, I mean, that goes a long way, I think. Well, the thing I think that they're also doing really well also, just to kind of tie into the, what the Acolytes did, is they're kind of walking the line between, you know, what the people who follow the wrestling news on the internet and newsletters know and what the actual fans at home who don't have access to that know. 
And a lot of the people uh, like to follow the internet, sh the, the internet <coughs> pages and the, and the dirt sheets and things like that know the reputation of Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and Hulk Hogan, and know what they did in WCW, and know how they contributed to that company's downfall. Um, so uh, there's been a lot of references to that on television. And at the same time, the people at home who are watching it that don't understand that part of it just make just are just thinking along the lines of, well, look, they took over WCW. Look what they did there. They're, they wreaked right. havoc. So it, it, it satisfies both audiences, which is a really uh, tough thing to do in this day and age, and a really smart thing to do because, again, as we've said before on this show, I, as I, I believe I said on the webpage, this is as close to a shoot angle that you're ever going to get because it's, it's, it's legit. These guys are going to come in on television, take over the company, and legitimately may end up coming backstage and taking over the company. It's happened before twice. Well, that, I mean, that, that's completely crucial to this NWO angle to survive. And that's, well, and I mentioned this last week in a column that I wrote for the trip. You know, you've got to keep the numbers of the group down. Right. That's, that's essential. Mm -hmm. but the other thing is, you have to have this group come in and get the better of the WWF. Yeah. And that's something we didn't see with the Alliance. You know, Booker T, Diamond Dallas Page, the two big stars that they were able to get from the past WCW, those guys were basically treated. Obviously, Booker T was, you know, squashed by The Rock whenever he had a chance yeah. to. And Diamond Dallas Page was forgotten in Wrestling on Heat. So, but I, I think what really needs to happen is the NWO has to come in, they have to go after the top faces, Austin, The Rock, and they have to beat these guys down and make it seem like they're a legitimate threat, even though there's only three of them obviously guided by Vince McMahon. Well, one of the reasons, I'm going to get into another reason the Alliance failed, and this is going to really seem like nitpicking, but the one time, I think it was on Heat or it might have been on Excess, they had the Alliance versus WWF in softball. Now, can you imagine right. right now with the build-up for the NWO, if somewhere down the line, maybe in a month or so, <coughs> on you know a show just for filler like Excess or whatnot, the WWF versus the NWO in softball? And that yeah. is very picky in my eyes. But to be no, true, it's not picky at but, all. But the, for this thing to be taken seriously, stuff like that has to be avoided. Th yeah. There, I say that the NWO has to. Maybe they should just come out of the stands rather than walk out the runway. That right. is like probably just as picky as you can get. But it's the little things that may represent the overall picture. There's nothing wrong with showing. Alliance versus WWF softball games, but that's the kind of stuff that The Rock needs to talk about when he goes on Regis and Kelly or when he goes on the Today Show. Mm -hmm. That's not the kind of stuff that you want to gear towards your wrestling fans because essentially what you're selling them is a product that they believe, or at least they try to believe, is something that they're seeing that's legitimate. Right. And the NWO coming in and taking advantage and getting the better of the WWF has to happen. There's yeah. no question about it. The Rock can't do a nip up and then beat the crap out of all three of them and then go on to SmackDown and beat Scott Hall in a one-on-one -on -one match, completely right. throwing away everything you've done up until this point. And the other thing, too, just to draw on, also to draw on what Tom said, is that this is, in the way this story is built, in the way this story is designed, is much more serious than the Alliance. This isn't just, we want to prove we're the superior company, you know, we want to prove that we have been all along. This is the death of the WWF. This is bringing the NWO in to kill the WWF. And that's different, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it's war, quote unquote. It's a bad term to use at this, day, at this time in this day and age, but that's what this is. And so if you're right, if these two teams were playing softball against one another, that would just kill everything. I mean, with the Alliance thing, it made it look stupid, but that would kill this. Oh, this has absolutely. to be treated seriously. Let's not forget, too, about the, um, the Alliance, is the fact that they would take, you know, you had Booker T, you had... Diamond Dallas Page. You had Mike Awesome, and I know no one knows who that is anymore. <laughs> but you know those guys were kind of forgotten about, and you know it's just one of the things that really contributed to the Alliance being a joke. Well, we're black and white, and I think we have a couple more things to say about this whole NWO thing. We want to get into Raw, which was actually a pretty damn good show this past Monday. So stay tuned, and we promise sometime in the show, you were male. <laughs> My game today. I'm. I don't know why, but uh, let's talk a little bit more about Raw, maybe close out this whole NWO discussion, which currently has my interest peaked. But <laughs> until next week, like you said, Rennie, w whether the fact that whether you have St uh, The Rock or Steve Austin wearing an NWO shirt and defecting to the NWO, Can much happen. the same way we saw Steve Austin and Kurt Angle in the Alliance, <sighs> which I just, for the life of me, I can't understand why they would choose to do that. Okay, they're names, but still, they're WWF names. Think, about the, think about the Survivor Series and think about, obviously, Team w WWF. It was Jericho, Rock. Uh, Big Show, Kane, and Undertaker, and look at the Alliance team. There was Shane McMahon, who's not a member of WCW as far as I'm concerned, Austin, not a member, Angle, not a member, and I Booker think uh, was Booker T one of them, and Rob Van Dam. So okay, Booker T, he was just that one guy in there that you could get out real quick and get pinned. So I mean, you think about that, and then you'll understand why the Alliance didn't work. Yeah, unfortunately I do think 
I don't know. That you, I don't think you're going to see a mass exodus to the NWO from WWF because I wouldn't be surprised if one or two guys <coughs> talk that X Pac. Well, is that's different. Go. He has a sense. history with the, the group. Shawn Michaels is, is the other guy who yeah, up. But I think somebody other than those two guys is. There's definitely going to be w at least one person who's going to go. When you, it's got to happen. When you refer to Shawn Michaels or X Pac, I mean, they're, yeah, you want to debate. They're currently on the WWF roster. Michaels hasn't wrestled or actually had a prominent role in years. X Pac, much to Jim's dismay, can wrestle when he wants to, but he's been injured from time to time. I'm talking about a guy similar to The Rock <coughs> or Austin. Well, Just I think somebody like that will, not necessarily those two guys or Triple H. I don't think any of those three guys will, but somebody's going to jump. But, well, another reason what killed the NWO and WCW, and not to mention the guys that were in it, throwing guys in from week to week, you had a Scott. Norton yeah. from one week, you had Vincent, you had Horace, or whatever the hell his name Bagwell. is. Just name, well, Bagwell, his role wasn't actually half bad in the end. <coughs> and I hate Bagwell. It, it got watered down toward the end. I think they could have done it. In agreement, but the whole NWO got watered down, you know, about the fourth or fifth running of it. But the thing is, to throw names in the NWO just to bump ratings, screw ratings for this, focus on the angle, yeah. bottom line. Well, the thing is, and uh, the WF might have a tendency to do this, and that's maybe take someone like a Lance Storm or a Christian, who, for all intent and purposes, really isn't doing that much right now. And they might take a Lance Storm and put him in the NWO thinking, well, we need guys in the NWO that can wrestle. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and put the black and white shirt on him and go ahead and throw him out there to wrestle. Even though if you watch backstage vignettes and main storylines, he's not an integral part of the group. And that's something we saw with past NWO factions when you saw someone like a Scott Norton who would wrestle on like worldwide. And say, like, we have an NWO main event. Well, no, you don't because they, you never see them hanging out with Hall or Nash or Hogan or any of the big time players. There I say there's a big difference between us. Uh, a Scott Norton and a Lance Storm. To build a guy and to give him maybe a character, a fresh run in the WWF with a good push, a Lance Storm is needed. A Scott Norton is nothing but, I forget John Lydon from the Sex Pistols, referring to Sid Vicious maybe, a coat hanger in the closet taking up space. Yeah. That's what your Scott Norton was Great in the NWO. Reference, the oh, that, absolutely brilliant. That's true, but my point about Lance Storm is the fact that you can't just throw him in there and let him just wrestle as an NWO member. You have to make him a part of the group. You have to make him talk to other members of the group, like Hall Nash and other guys who mean something. We all know this, though. I mean, it's just it, the question well, is no, 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 not to be insulting or anything. Oh, no, I know. The question is whether or not they're going to, if they do incorporate guys like that, give them the adequate time they need to establish the fact why they're you with the to. group. Why? Yeah. I know they do. It's and just the thing is, are they going to do it? You know, we brought up, Brian brought up this point earlier in the fact that we've been saying about tradition, it needs to be embraced by the WWF. That was the problem. Vince McMahon doesn't have the same kind of, uh, tr you know, he doesn't value the tradition of WCW the way he does his own company, which right. is why I think we saw that video we did last Monday on Raw. He cares about his past stars like Andre the Giant and Pedro Morales and Bruno, probably even to a certain extent, even though obviously the two, you know, don't get along that well. Right. Yeah, and, and, and the, the other thing, too, is that even though the NWO is not a Vince McMahon idea, the stars are Vince McMahon's stars. They're guys that exactly. create. Exactly. That's a great point. And that's why I think he's able to more uh, to embrace this idea a little bit more because he brought those guys into the spotlight. And you can argue, you know, Hogan made Vince, Vince made Hogan. They made each other. And you know, one wouldn't be there without the other. He made Kevin Nash a star. He made Scott Hall a star. He made Sean Waltman a star. He made Sean Michaels a star. So. That, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. The NWO thing to him. No, I don't think. I, I think Vince McMahon understands the fact that you know those are his boys, and all he really did was he made them stars. He he gave them a chance to sign with WCW for guaranteed money, and maybe set up themselves financially. And then Eric Bischoff just said, well, you know, he just happened to fall ass backwards into a great storyline that he, to his credit, and maybe more to the credit of the name values that he had was able to sustain for a few years and give WCW, I think, one profit in the year 1996. But if you remember just conflicting rumors before Scott Hall and Kevin Nash joined WCW initially, before the NWO concept was born, I don't, these were just rumors, keep in mind, but hey, the rumors have a lot of validity to them. Some of them have truth, that they were going to bring Kevin Nash in. Weren't they going to bring Scott Hall in, quote-unquote, as the freedom fighter, the French freedom fighter, because they couldn't do the Latin thing because of Razor Ramon? Kevin Nash was going to be called propane. And like I said, these are just rumors. But you've got to think. Really bad ones, too. But the thing is, you've got to think. So every rumor has a little bit of truth to it. Yeah, those sound like WCW plans. I mean, those sound like things that they would have done back in that day and age. So, I mean... You know, there could be a little bit, a little nugget of truth in there somewhere. <laughs> but one thing too, and you know, we talked about this earlier about how much you know the WF needs to embrace their tradition. You know, people watched, and they were in attendance, obviously at Raw. They watched that video, and they actually cheered after they saw it, right. which leads me to believe that what we've been saying on the show for the last two months that people still do care about past stars. Oh, absolutely. You know, I just I never understood the fact that well, you know, they don't care about who Bruno San Martino is or superstar Billy Graham or Andre the Giant. That's not true. You know, I saw a picture of uh, Cowboy Bob Orton, and I saw one of Hulk Hogan. To me, 
just as important to the WWF because if it wasn't for Bob Orton, who did Hogan have to beat on Memorial Day every other year? Exactly. You know, so I just, I, I think, you know, the WWF is really taking a strong step to showing how important, you know, the company really is. Well, we should also, before we get out of this segment, mention a couple of newsworthy items from Raw. Steve Austin, which surprised uh, three or four people, beat Kurt Angle to become the number one contender to the world title. Uh, he'll fight Chris Jericho, no way out. Um, what well, fight and win over Chris Jericho? You know what, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, of course, I'm always wrong, so now this point is Chris <laughs> Jericho's going to lose. But I think after what they did last week with Triple H, uh, kind of starting to, put, you know, to plant the seeds of can he make it to WrestleMania, I think that's going to be their story. <coughs> I think there's a little bit more to gain out of the Chris Jericho Triple H right now because you have the whole thing with Triple H and Stephanie being on the outs. Uh, I think there's a lot more to gain, and I think this story has a lot more to evolve before WrestleMania gets here. And I think Austin's going to be—I think Austin's going to lose that match because of one of the NWO members. I think that's going to be the big X factor here, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, that was a good group too, X Factor. No, they were right. But that was probably the most noteworthy thing that happened. We're already black and white, so. We're going to come back. We have uh, stacks of uh, viewer mail to get to, so please return after this. We're on time, so without any further ado, why don't you read that fabulous question from last week, number four. Yeah, um, <laughs> let, well, maybe we should explain. Uh, we're only going to read questions from last week's show because the three on the website were absolutely ridiculous and um, stupid. But um, <laughs> that, and that's my fault. But anyway, I'll take the blame. Last week's uh, question from the show was, well, let me, let me get the prop ready. Who did Bling Bling Savio Vega replace in the eight-man tag at the 1998 No Way Out? There he is. Sam? He's in his nation gear. Uh, it was actually Shawn Michaels with the correct answer, and congratulations because nobody won. So, but <laughs> we were actually giving this figure out this week, so everybody loses. Yeah, well, everybody would lose anyway if they won this figure. Uh, what you would have won had anybody been smart enough to answer the questions correctly. From Original Pizza Works in Traversburg, Pennsylvania, that's in the United States of America. It's in between, like, the Key Sport, West Mifflin Tier, and Glass Sports down here. Uh, anyway, and draw me a map. it's a fine little utopia in the world. It is. It's a nice little community. It's like a street. It's pretty much all it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see, this is really bad because, like, our paper covers it. I love Traversburg. I drive through there every day, and I'm going to get a ticket. Uh, you would have won from Original Pizza Works, one large pie with one topping, an order of chicken wings, and a two-liter bottle of carbonated beverage, of your choice, and uh, but you, nobody won, so you know, <laughs> tough. <laughs> <Get out of>. <laughs> <laughs> we have like, this is great. But you could have had it for the Super Bowl party, you know. Yeah, but you were allowed to do that though. Or you allowed? To, I thought you had to be watching wrestling while you eat. You, you know, know, with our prize. Rams drink that Domino's. every time. Oh, whatever I scores. You know, I ordered that SummerSlam the one year, and they <laughs> wouldn't deliver Domino's to my house. <laughs> well, it's they sponsored the damn events. Anyway, you know what? Actually, much. I got a story about that. I'll tell you it another time. Ah, another one on the Pressing Review Outtakes tape. But this question. <laughs> 1995, available we in two years. We promise it's a little more copacetic <laughs> this week. Who did Sid Vicious or Psycho Sid beat to win his two WWF titles? And somehow I know what I said at the end of the show, so I'm going to repeat it again. <laughs> Himself is not an answer. So answer the three on the website under trivia. This fourth one, we promise these three will be a little more tolerable this week. It'll actually be about wrestling, which is, you know, not how many sides the square have. <laughs> <laughs> so. Four. Anyway, <laughs> really, notwithstanding my intelligence, ProWrestlingReview.com, <laughs> trivia, have fun answering these questions, and uh, you can win some pizza. So And drive to Dravosburg, the street. It's lovely this time of year. Good luck. Hell, we have tons and tons of white paper all over this desk. So we can't even see the lovely else. gray. Yeah. yeah. Let's just completely ignore all the letters. No, we actually do enjoy getting letters from our viewers. Uh, we try to read all of them, but uh, we've just been bombarded for the last three weeks. And there's been a lot of stuff going on. In too. the last three weeks, maybe even a month, I mean, a lot of the letters have been really long, really well, wi really well written. There, finally. <laughs> and we thank you, viewers, for that. And I'm going to take one right here. Uh, hey, fellas, just wanted to drop you a line. Been watching it for a while. Like the show. Uh, something to the effect of there used to be a woman on here that did wrestling terms. And uh, the person who wrote this believes that we should have maybe a woman in some capacity on here without dumbing everything down in wrestling terms, like potato. Do you know what potato means? <laughs> Who cares what potato <laughs> means? But according to this, that was the first trivia. Uh, or, um, I'm sorry, that was the first on there. They didn't get to see her bring the ladder in yet, though, so that's... Yeah. You so know so what? Thankfully, that never happened. Seriously, there were some ideas that just didn't happen. 
<laughs> they, they, <laughs> we're going to say they're strictly, I'll be doing a shoot interview on the uh, Pro Wrestling Review Too Hot for TV true. tape, and I will discuss all these in detail. <laughs> but uh, something had to do with a ladder, a mattress, and a bag of potatoes, which we really don't want to get into right here. But um, And the kids actually could watch it. It sounds really bad, but I mean, it was really... Yeah, I mean, there's nothing dirty or anything about it to that effect, but uh, as far as dummying it down or saying, oh my God, Edge is so hot, yeah, I agree that we should maybe... We could probably stand a woman on here to do something rather than dummying everything down. But the person we have to clear with isn't here, so... Well, well he's, he's, he's upstairs, upstairs currently uh, shellacking his closet right now. <laughs> but, um, and also on this letter, the sound on WBGN <laughs> on the show... Shellacking on, uh, his closet. <laughs> I just you know, there's just some phrases you hear and you See, don't know I'm where they came from. I'm trying to take this from. seriously. He is. Go upstairs. He probably has the buffer up there. <laughs> I'm uh, talking I'm about Jim, right? No, I'm talking about Mr. Dickinson. Anyway, the show on <laughs> January 19th, the sound was terrible. Uh, well, there's not really much I you can do about that. You did something I, for I that, posted though. something on the front of the on the homepage of the website <laughs> with the number for the station on there. This, to our, the best of our knowledge, the sound quality is not our fault. So well, actually, Tom. It, <laughs> if you remember, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that was Here's where Brian completely contradicts Tom. Yeah. <laughs> that was the way we whispered through all the segments. Uh, that was intentional. Oh, it didn't that's matter right. how loud you turned it up. See, that, that see I was thinking about the 19th the week before. But uh, on a final note, Tom, I'm right with you. Rock free shows is the way to go. Smile. And this past Monday on Raw, he wasn't on. And guess what? He really wasn't missed. And that was from. Elise, I hope I pronounced that right in Pittsburgh. So thank you. And do you realize you're the first person today to say the Rock's name on the show? Yeah, but it was in good context. He wasn't there. I just thought you'd like to know that, though. Mm -hmm. Let me write that one down. And I was the second person, so I'm equally at fault. Um, we got a letter from Pam Zool from Bethel Park. Uh, is there any truth to the rumors that Dr. David Schultz is going to be part of the NWO? Gee, I hope so. Uh, and she, her next line, I really the hope fact, so. The, 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 the In fact, fact he, he was one of the ones that made me think that wrestling was real. That's because he beat the hell out of people for real. Talk show hosts, you know. John Stoss like boxed his ears. He did give Hogan a couple good matches, runs for his money when Hogan had the title back in the day. But the fact that David Schultz is about 75 years old right now, well, he's up in age. I mean, I don't think he'd really be a great addition with young hip guys like Kevin Nash, who's 45. Do you remember the rumor that um, Dr. David Schultz was the guy that were going to bring in to play the uh, Isaac Dr. Gankham Isaac character. Yankum? Yeah. Well, he looked like him a little bit, so just a little, little bit. I remember I used to have a Heroes and Villains book, and Dr. David Schultz, yeah. the, the, the villains part was just him. Yeah. So <laughs> they, right. that, that says a lot about him. And the kind Wait, of there was another was. part of that letter, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, right. No, that's okay. What does the panel think about my idea for having the midgets return to the wrestling? I really think it would be a great addition to WF as far as fun is concerned. Well, the, the thing about midgets are, and this, <laughs> this isn't in general, midget. this isn't in general about midget wrestling is the fact that it's just something they, they bring in periodically. You know, just as something different. Yeah. It's a lot like the women's division. You know, sometimes but you see it, sometimes you don't. But with the good, there's the bad. And with midget wrestling, you have Jerry Lawler saying his cute little comments, trying yeah. to ruin the match, trying to just get the yeah. fact that he's cool, he's hip, he's 80 years old out there. So, well, uh, and plus, you still have the whole Barrio scandal from the early 90s still <laughs> going down a little bit. <laughs> oh and that may include them, so we don't really want to get into a whole hell of a lot yeah, about that. They're just, they're kind of just, and I know this is going to sound really insensitive, but they're basically just kind of a sideshow act yeah. in order to, you know, you know, break the pace of seeing regular wrestling matches. That's what, yeah, you really can't book for these guys. I mean, it's hard. About it. I mean, there, there, there's some good, there's some good midget wrestlers in Mexico who are great wrestlers. I mean, who are better than guys, you know, in America, like the freaking Big Show. I mean, oh, you take that back. Of, no, but seriously, these guys are very good wrestlers. But nobody, in, I mean, I hate to say it, but nobody in the United States are going to take them seriously. So it, it's really not worth it. But uh, well, let's get to another letter. We have uh, a letter here. If I could just separate the pages from Jeff Navarro. He sent us a couple letters. Uh, Jeff writes, uh, he, 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 did, he assumed that this is the show a couple weeks ago, right before the Rumble, we were complaining that The Rock wasn't saying anything serious about the build up for the match for <coughs> Jericho. And he brings up on SmackDown, he says that uh, if you think The Rock did poorly, I highly disagree with you. He had a share of lines, but in the end, he was very serious. I couldn't disagree with you more. And I know we, we mentioned this on the show. Rock can't be serious. You know, for The Rock to be serious, it's not for him to walk up like Tom Selassie and say, tick tock, tick tock, or for him to, look, for The Rock to be serious, he has to stop referring to himself in third person and stop <coughs> using catchphrases. That's what's being serious. Ric Flair has how many catchphrases? But on Raw this past Monday, in order to get a point across about how serious it was for the NWO to come in and threaten the WWF, he was serious Ric Flair. He talked like a normal human being. Like he was talking to somebody without cameras on, trying to say, look, you're making a stupid decision. That's what we mean by The Rock has to be serious. The Rock has to treat people like human beings every now and again. He doesn't have to spew his catchphrases out every single week. Um, 
Sure, they're marketable, but you know, like if he came out one week and didn't do that, if he came out one week and treated and acting serious, like he's got to do it at least once right. during this NWO thing. He yeah, got he could be the person that brings this angle down. But one thing that right. dampers the Rock is the fact that, you know, not that him confronting Jericho and looking at him eye to eye, saying, you know, I'm taking this match seriously. The guy never talks about the belt. Right. He never talks about who Chris Jericho beat. And unlike Hunter, he never talks since did Chris Jericho. You know, Hunter doing this on Raw was more than The Rock has done right. for six right. months. Right. And that's a testament to Triple H being confident with his character, being able to praise Chris Jericho, being able to praise someone like Mick Foley, who he did years ago when they were feuding. And you don't see that from The Rock. Talk about the titles. What is this belt? The unifi unified titles. What do they mean to you? We don't know. Because all he does is insult Jericho right. and beat Booker T whenever he <laughs> needs to wrestle. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, Rock needs to wrestle. I mean, Booker, you're in. Right. Well, you know, speaking of Booker T, it's, it's funny you said that. His next paragraph, he says, I think you guys have looked uh, Booker T a uh, lot as far as stories go. I think All he's right, really I'm close to being a major, major player. Uh, I don't know, Jeff, I mean, and again, a very well-written letter. Uh, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm taking Jeff to task here. But I don't know if you watched the show. Uh, I'm being serious. I don't, maybe you don't. Maybe you just checked the website. We praised Booker T on this show week after week after week, and we kept saying to the whole thing leading up to SummerSlam and the whole thing through the Alliance feud was that, Booker T's a main event player. He's he a carries himself money. like a main event wrestler. Right. He's a big money star that the WWF has used incorrectly. We've said that a hundred times. Jeff, buddy, pal, we, we're behind you 100% here. We have been pleading his case for six months now. You're right. Booker T, does, it's a shame that he's no higher on the list. It's a shame that we had to come out and say, it's great that he beat Triple H on Raw. What a huge win for Booker T. That's a shame. Yeah. We shouldn't have to bat an eye at that. When speaking of Booker T, I have a little save for him in the rant segment, which I hope you are not going to ruin right now by uh, adding to what he said, ruin my rant. So, okay. <laughs> or black and white. Already? Yeah. Hell. So. Well, I guess you want to take us up? Sure. <laughs> uh, we have a lot more letters to get to, so please come back and maybe we'll hear your name on TV. So, see ya. <laughs> yeah, more letters from you, the fans, that have written to us. So. Without any further ado, I think I will jump right into another one by uh, Rennie, how do you pronounce the last name? It's uh, Zool. Like from the Ghostbuster movie. Yeah. Okay. Right. The big mountain cat that tried to kill them all. <laughs> so in this letter, in addition to other returning gimmicks, gimmicks I would love to... See, this is the problem. <laughs> in addition to other returning gimmicks, I would love to see Sean Stasiak surprise <laughs> his role as Beaver Cleavage. Well, that was actually by Ma Mosh of the Headbangers. Uh, Brian, you point out Chaz Warrington. Sean Stasiak actually played the meat character, which, if you don't remember, that shame on all you people out there because it was great for the whole minute it lasted. <laughs> before or after his hair plugs? I think it was after, actually. And how about a tag team match between Chuck and Billy against the returning Lenny and Lodi? Well, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I mean, Chuck and Billy are absolutely hilarious in their role. I mean, we talked last week about maybe sticking gold dust with them, just to give <coughs> them that little bump. Well, no pun intended there. I don't think I was trying to. But maybe even Kiwi. You need something for Kiwi to do? Throw them with Chuck and Billy. But they're absolutely... I think they're funny. You mean Angry Alan? Remember his alter ego? Oh, that's right. It was Alan Funk. <laughs> Yay. So well, anyway, stuff. with that in mind, why don't you kick... Why I tape Thunder every week. Okay, quit, I'm sorry. quit wasting time. All right. I, you know, I have a problem with that. But anyway, um, this letter is from, let me make sure I say the name right, Preston Serrani. Uh, one of the things he talks about, he wrote us a really long letter, and we certainly appreciate it. Um, he mentions about Chris Jericho and how he should not be headlining WrestleMania, and he just goes on to say about Jericho's not established as a main eventer, and... The fans haven't bought Jericho as a main event heel yet, which is why they should take the title off of him. And if, that, if they would do that, that'd be the right decision. Obviously, we speculated about him wrestling Steve Austin at No Way Out, and that's definitely a possibility, but one that I think that should be avoided. I mean, yeah. I think Chris Jericho needs to go to WrestleMania. And the point that he brings up, it's a valid one about him not being taken seriously, but whose fault is that? Right. Jericho, to me, has done a great job since he's been given the undisputed title. He stepped his game up, definitely. Exactly, but the thing about Jericho, and I'm going to get to this later in my rants, is that he needs to start getting clean wins over people on television. Right. And we oh, saw that a little bit against Maven. So, I mean, that is a crucial part to developing a strong heel champion. He doesn't necessarily have to wrestle The Rock every week, or Steve Austin, or someone of that magnitude. He could easily wrestle someone else. Yeah. Like and, and the thing was, leading into WrestleMania, you've got all these NWO members that are going to be back. Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, maybe Hogan by that point. You don't need, your, your world title does not have to be on Steve Austin or The Rock. Not you at all. enough to sell this paper. It, it's WrestleMania. People are going to buy WrestleMania because it's WrestleMania, you know? And the NWO coming back doesn't hurt anything either. Exactly. I mean, it, this is going to be, if you were worried about Chris Jericho being the champion, this is going to be that added bump you're going to get of people buying the show. 
he can be a world champion. Well, the one thing he does say is, you know, it's a lot of pressure to be put on someone like Jericho who doesn't have maybe as much main event experience as someone like The Rock, who's been, I think, in like three of the last four main events at WrestleMania. But I'm a big advocate of if you want to have a guy like Chris Jericho go out there and succeed, you have to take chances with him. You have to let Absolutely. him fail. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn from your mistakes, and I think Chris Jericho has done that from years past when people said he was too sloppy or, or he was too goofy to be a main eventer. He stepped up his character to the point where I can take him seriously as a main eventer. He just needs big wins and his opposition, i.e. The Rock, to take him seriously. And rest being at WrestleMania in the main event against somebody of the caliber of Triple H wouldn't hurt either. Yeah. Will you watch over the next month how Steve Austin takes him seriously? Because I believe he will. Steve Austin is how to treat his Wise? <laughs> no, I, I was actually <laughs> saying that to reiterate the point. <laughs> we got a letter from uh, Matt G, who've gone back and forth with a little bit, but uh, he writes and says, uh, why you guys always sit down at Vince Russo whenever his name comes up? I don't remember you complaining this much when he was head of creative team. If you're basing your opinion on his performance while at WCW, I don't think that's fair. You know as well as I do, he was handcuffed creatively in a lot of ways, as well as having to deal with employees that weren't team players. Okay, and he goes on and on just to say that you know he, he built the WWF up. Um, can, can now, do we really need to... Yeah, well, yeah, somebody no, I, say something. I, you know, you know what? I, I'll say this. I, that's a legitimate question. <laughs> yeah. People have been discussing that's where the legitimacy this stops because of you know the the, the creative rut the WWF had been in. Here's a couple points. Number one, why we said that we weren't down on, w, on Vince Russo when he was in the WWF. Let me point out this show didn't come on until around the time he left the WWF. So the reason we weren't down on him is because we weren't on the air. <laughs> but um, good point. The other thing is. You're right. He was handcuffed in WCW. The, he did have to go, put up with a lot of the bureaucracy there, things he didn't have to really put up with in the WWF. On the other hand, in the WWF, he had an editor at Vince McMahon, a guy who would go through his stuff and pull out some of the dumb things. From the, a lot of the stories I've read, he had some dumb ideas in the WWF that Vince McMahon was smart enough to set down and say, this <coughs> is really stupid. We can't do this. Vince Russo had to find a happy medium in WCW and didn't do it. He failed. He failed to work with the restrictions that were placed on him. And the other thing is the thing with Vince Russo, I think his time has come and gone. The Vince Russo era worked for a period of time, and I just don't think it, it, it's going to work anymore. It didn't work in the last year he was in the WWF. He didn't work in WCW. You know, I know that you enjoyed his way of doing television, but I just don't think it's going to work anymore. Just, you know, just my opinion. Uh, you know, I don't know how you guys feel, but... Pretty much black and white or I'd say that. something. Oh, shoot. We but uh, we, once again, we want to thank you for all your letters. We're going to try to get some more of them in the upcoming weeks. But uh, we're going to come back and we're going to do our rant, so please stay with us. Since Jim is uh, on injured reserve, I'm going to start off this week and uh, just build on something that we've already brought up on the show. And I'd just like to say a little bit more about, and that is, with this whole NWO story starting, it's obvious that the main targets of the group are going to be uh, The Rock, Steve Austin, Triple H, some of the big name players. And I have total confidence that Steve Austin <coughs> and Triple H are going to handle this situation as they should, as professionals. Um, but I'm not so certain about The Rock. I'm really worried that, you know, as important as this story is, and before we mention about how this isn't like the Alliance, where you're trying to say, well, our group's better than your group. This is life and death, quote unquote, in the WWF. This is the NWO trying to kill the WWF. So The Rock can't come out and say that Kevin Nash wants to see his strudel, okay? <laughs> he can't come out and call. Scott Hall a donkey scrotum. He can't do things like that because this is serious stuff. This is about The Rock losing his way of life. And if he's not going to treat Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and Hulk Hogan seriously, then he shouldn't be a part of this angle. He's got to come out one time and maybe talk like himself. Maybe even say what his real name is and be serious and not say The Rock this, The Rock that, but say I this, I that. He's got to be serious about it. He's got to treat these guys like the threat they are supposed to be in this story. And if he doesn't do it, he's going to look stupid. And the story's going to look stupid. That's the bottom line of this. And I'm not going to be a sore loser. I'm going to make my Super Bowl bet. Rams 55, Patriots 21. They're going to get killed. And they'll score 14 points in the fourth quarter. The, the Patriots. Let me tell you, that didn't sound bitter at all. It's not. They did a good job. Hey, I totally agree. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit of, in my rant. We talked about it a little bit last segment in our mail segment about uh, Chris Jericho. And uh, I just want to give him a lot of praise this past week on Raw and Maven for that matter. I think those two had what should have been a really sloppy match. It was actually very good. It went a long way to Chris Jericho winning clean. And I realized it was against a guy who was, you know, probably working at McDonald's a year ago. But still, Maven's the kind of guy and other guys like that that Chris Jericho needs to fight on television. He needs to go out there, have quality TV feuds, 
and then go to pay-per-views and wrestle people like Steve Austin, The Rock. There's nothing in the WWF rulebook that says that he has to wrestle The Rock every week on Raw or SmackDown. And just to tie in a little bit with Maven, um, I'm really starting to enjoy The Undertaker's gimmick. Um, I was a little skeptical about him being a heel, obviously still with the Limp Biscuit music and people still wanting to cheer him, but you know, his character's come a long way, and it, again, it goes back to the way he talks about The Rock, you know, no more singing, no more dancing, he's all business, he's the kind of heel that the WWF hasn't seen in a long time. In this past Monday on Raw, you saw Booker T in a pretty good match with Hunter. I mean, it wasn't anything to write home about, it was a decent match, score an upset win over Triple H. And I would just like to say a testament to Triple H, willing to put Booker T over, something that The Rock, Steve Austin, twice in a row would not do, for whatever reason. The fact that Booker T won the match, Hunter wasn't afraid to lose, did three things. One, it propelled Booker T, took him maybe in fans' eyes a little more seriously. He scored a big win over Triple H. Can you imagine if Triple H won the match? It wouldn't have done any of these three things. That was the first one. Number two, it gave, uh, yeah, it gave Chris Jericho. It gave Triple H an on-air <coughs> feud, possibly, with Christian coming down and interfering in the match. Great. On-air feuds. A main eventer and a heel, probably main eventer someday, in the works in Christian. Great. And three, it also established, it furthered the storyline with Hunter and Stephanie possibly breaking up, whatever the hell you want to call it. The thing is, if Hunter would have won that match, went out there, wouldn't have made Booker T look good, none of that would have happened. And in the past, it's a shame, the fact that I'm going to bring this up, in two feuds with The Rock, two matches, a couple matches with Austin, Hunter made Booker T on Monday, this, this past Monday on Raw, look better than those guys did in any one of their matches. And it's truly a testament to Triple H being the game, being the best wrestler right now in the WWF, in wrestling. And it's just a shame it took this long for Booker T to get an impressive win. His biggest win to date, no doubt about Absolutely. it. it took, it's a shame it took that long because, as we said, Booker T is a main event player. He is a main eventer waiting to happen. And just for the hell of it, if you do buy WWF Monthly Magazine or read it or whatever the hell, if you read the article on Booker T in there, if, without watching WWF television, it sounds like Booker T is the number one guy in the company. And I don't understand how, why not they just use some of that little knowledge that they have in the magazine and transfer it over into storylines and TV. But I can dream. Let's not also forget it might have set up a Triple H Booker T match and no one Well, out. obviously, I was overlooking that. Number four. Well, if you want to read my column, and hell, why wouldn't you? It's called Sharpshooter. You can read it in the Daily News. You can pick it up on newsstands all over the place or read it on the Internet. www.dailynewsmckeesport.com. <coughs> look at the columnist section. And if you want to read my column, you can pick it up on newsstands tomorrow or you can read it on the web. It's www.triblive.com slash sports. I apologize for the column being in Monday's paper, but our Steelers coverage runneth over, so that's what happens in the newspaper biz. And I'd like to say none other than Craig Ferris is to blame for that, which I know he's a big fan of the show, and he'll probably get a kick out of that So if I don't lose my job in the process. But uh, the, pro the, web yeah, the, pro the website, once again, right at the bottom of the screen, you can see it right down there, prowrestlingreview.com. And this week's trivia question, once again, is who did Sid Vicious, or Psycho Sid, for all you skeptical fans out there, who did Psycho Sid beat to win his two WWF titles? And himself is not an answer. So answer the three on the website under trivia. This one, ProWrestlingReview.com. Please name at an address, and please be able to spell your name. We also have a couple of email <coughs> addresses. You want to send us an email, like the wonderful pieces of literature we read to you this afternoon, this evening, whatever. It's uh, ProWrestlingReview at MailCity.com. Uh, if you hate us, if you hate Jim, since he's not here this week, if you just have hatred. If you, I mean, it's got to be legitimate, true venom and, and hatred. Aww. It's I hate PWR <laughs> at cs.com. Uh, please don't waste our time. And for all the real mail, oh, you already gave that out anyway. Yes. So I guess that's about it, right? That's it. And so, well, we're hope we hope you're going to enjoy the Super Bowl this Sunday, which would actually be tomorrow in your time. So I don't know why I brought that up. I'm just trying to fill time here. So with that, screw that. For me, for Rennie, for Brian, and hopefully we'll see Jim next week. This is Pro Wrestling Review. We hope we've enjoyed you just a little bit on this cold, dreary Saturday night. Probably 80 degrees anyway. But we'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>